go ahead and get started. It is um, right at, we are starting at 2.01, but we're going to actually start today just by outlining how it's going to work with the webinar. So that'll take a few minutes and as people continue to join, um, that should work out, um, should work out well. Um, greetings, everyone. My name is Beth Eisensee. I'm an assistant director at International Student and Scholar Services. We are excited to be hosting our very first International Scholar virtual forum. So for today, I would like to go through how we're going to, um, uh, the, what the format will be. We do have several presenters and these, and the presenters themselves will be about, uh, will take about a half an hour for the presenters on various topics related to um, uh, uh, international scholars life at the University of Minnesota. And then at the end of the 30 minutes, we will do a, uh, or, no, well, it's going to be about 35 minutes and then at the end of that we will do 25 minutes for a open question and answer session. So if you along the way if you have questions that come into your mind or if you just um, even now have questions that you want to ask there are two ways that you can ask questions. The first um, is through the chat function which is on the right hand side of your, well, no, chat function, which will be on the lower part of your screen. And that is, uh, that's, you can ask your questions in the chat function. Now, if you do that, you, it will, um, your ID for the webinar will, um, or the forum will show up. Uh, but it does help us because we can record all the questions and at the end of the, the virtual forum, we'll have the list of the questions and then we can go back to our uh, frequently asked questions on our website and up, update those. The other option you have is that there is a, uh, a it's, it's actually says Q and A um, function that's at the bottom of the screen. That is for, you can put your questions in there as well. Um, if, if you want the question to be anonymous so that your ID would not be included in the question. So use the Q and A if you want it to be anonymous. But otherwise, we ask that you put all of your questions into the chat function. This forum is being recorded uh, in case some people are not able to attend, and it will be posted on our ISSS webpage afterwards. And um, again, we will update our frequently asked questions that are listed on our website based on this forum, and we will continue to update those on a, a daily basis. So that is where you can go for the most frequent most um, current information. So with that, uh, I think we can go ahead and, and get started. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, our director and assistant dean, Dr. Barbara Kapler. Thank you, Beth. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this forum. We are very glad that you have taken the time to join in. We have a full program, as Beth mentioned, and we want to make sure that we have plenty of time for questions. But I did want to start with an acknowledgement just of how much uh, we understand this current situation with the pandemic has disrupted both your personal life, quite likely, significantly, as well as your professional life. We know that when you come to the University of Minnesota that you contribute enormously to research, to teaching, and to a wide range of projects um, that are good for us as an institution, for the students, and for the state. And we regret so much the disruption that you are experiencing at this time. We here at ISSS are working to be able to respond to the changes we are working to provide up-to-date information. And so, of course, this forum is one of those venues that we are using to reach out. As I begin, I do want to call attention to our governor, Tim Walls, and the announcement that the stay-at-home order has been extended through May 4th. We do have information on our website in our Frequently Asked Questions, the FAQ document, about the number of ways, I'm not sure what the right word is, but there are a number of situations for which all of us 
are able to leave our residences and be outdoors, of course, including for grocery shopping, including for exercise or getting fresh air, including getting medications. So we have um, taken the information from the state of Minnesota and provided that on our FAQ so that you're aware of um, the reasons for which it is um, okay to be leaving your residence. With that, I will turn over to Stacy Bouchard, our assistant director for a number of things at ISSS, including being head of the J program. Thank you, Barbara. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy that you could come to our first virtual forum. Uh, I wish I could see you all face-to-face uh, -face in person. I wish I could be physically in the same room with you and answering your questions, but uh, for now, this will have to this will have to be it, and we'll have to make do with what we have available to us. So, um, I wanted to talk about some questions that um, J advisors have been receiving from scholars recently, and answer those questions the best that I can. Um, so we've been receiving questions about, I would like to depart the United States. I want to um, end my J program. Should I do anything uh, with ISSS? And so, yes, we ask that you submit our departure form and you can go on to uh, my ISSS and find that departure form and fill that out and let us know what your plans are. If you have any difficulty accessing that departure form, please let us know and we can figure that out or simply get the information we need via email. But, um, but please try to fill out the departure form. Another question is, I'm going home and, I, and I'd like to continue to work remotely from home. Is this okay? Do I have to stay in the United States to maintain my J program? So the answer to that is, well, one, please let us know what you're thinking that you'd like to do. Um, it is okay for you to go home and work remotely. We totally understand why you would want to do that um, during these times. And yes, we can keep your J program active as long as you're continued, continuing to work in your J program activities um, from overseas and that you don't let your DS-2019 expire. That's especially important that you don't let your document expire even though you are overseas. Um, if you have plans on returning to the United States um, while your J program is still active, please be sure to get a travel signature. If you can do this before you leave, that'd be great. However, we can try to make it work uh, if you need one after you've uh, returned home. Another good idea is to make sure that you get a letter from your faculty mentor, and it might be easier to get this before you leave. Um, just explaining what your plans are um, so that when you do return, um, if you have to go get a visa or when you're coming through Customs Border Protection, um, you have some evidence of what, what you've been doing. The next question is, if I go back home to, I, to my home country, continue to work on my J program, um, can I continue? Well, I kind of answered that already. Yes, you can come back and continue. Again, you would have had to have been maintaining your J program. You would have had to continue to work in your J program and not let your DS-2019 expire. If you are not sure whether you're gonna come back to the United States, please try to talk about that with your faculty mentor and see what the best, uh, what the best thing to do is. Feel free to reach out to us as well if you wanna talk about your options. Uh, we, if you're not sure at this time and you're going to go home and you think, yes, for now, I'm going to work remotely, you can certainly do that. And then let us later, let us know later on if you've decided you're not going to come back, we can end your J program uh, while you're overseas. Um, but do keep in mind, if we do end your J program, we can't just simply reactivate it. It doesn't work that way. Um, for those of you who are in a research scholar or professor category, 
you, are, you do become subject to this thing called the 24 month bar. It's a little bit complicated maybe, but you become subject to this bar and it basically means that once your J program ends, you cannot come back on those categories for 24, month bar, uh, for 24 months. The categories again are professor and research scholar. So do make sure you, you know what you want your, what you want to do. And if you do intend to come back, then we should keep your J program active. Um, another uh, related question, I'm going home. I'd like to work remotely. I'm getting paid by the University of Minnesota. I'm, an, I'm a salaried employee of the University of Minnesota, uh, but I don't plan on coming back to the United States. So again, talk to your faculty mentor about this. Talk to the HR person in your department um, and make sure that you know what to do to continue to get paid from overseas. Um, another thing is if you do go overseas, you have no intention of coming back, we don't have to keep your J program active and therefore you don't have to continue to pay for health insurance. Uh, since you're, you are going home. And so if you want to get paid, but you don't want to have to pay for your employee benefits, you really need to talk about that with your HR person in your department. And, and maybe Linda, if you have additional questions, Linda is here today and can and help answer that question as well. Some other things that are going on is we have a number of scholars who have program end dates that are coming up that are within the month of April and the month of May. And some of you have been having difficulties finding flights and have had a difficult time trying to get home within the appropriate amount of time. So within that 30 day grace period that you all have after your program end date. So what has happened recently is the Department of State has approved a two month extension for J scholars that were still active with program end dates between April 1st and May 31st, 2020. And they did this so that people would have more time to find flights and to get home um, in, in the appropriate amount of time. So those have been done and we have been reaching out to you to let you know that you got this extension uh, if you feel you fall into this category and you didn't get an email from us, please reach out to us. Um, but I believe we've found everyone and we've reached out to you. For those of you who have program end dates in April and May and you know that you want to continue your J program and you are eligible for an extension, please be sure to fill out our extension form and get your DS-2019 extended. I recommend that you don't wait to the last minute that you start working on this now um, and, and so that you can get it extended before your, your current um, document expires. Um, so another question this is a, that we get quite often is, I want an extension, but I can't come into your office, so what do I do? Um, so go to our website. We have our extension application on our website. You can download it, print it off, fill it out, and email it to us. And the email that you want to use is ISSSJAST at umn.edu. So email your application, your extension application to us, and we will process that request. It does take us one to two weeks to process extension requests. If you are finding out that you have your, your document is going to expire in the next few days and you're worried that you're not gonna get this done in time, please let us know in the email, right in the subject line, let us know that your program is ending in one, two days, three days, whatever it might be so that we know that we need to get to this extension right away. Otherwise, we usually process extensions in the order that they come in. Um, and like I said, it normally takes us one to two weeks to process these extensions. Please know that you're not gonna get an email from us right away. It's, there's no automatic email set up to say, hey, we got your application um, and we're working on it. 
um, you're not going to get an email from us. We're, um, we're just going to get these extensions in and we're going to start working on them. If we have questions about your application, we will email you. We will also email you to let you know that we are done processing your extension request and it is ready for you. Um, if for some reason you submit your extension application and two weeks goes by and you don't hear from us, please let us know as well. Um, so I think that wraps up what I was going to talk about. And so I am going to now hand it off to Kabir Mohammed, uh, Director of Student Engagement. Hi. Um my name is Kabir Mohammed, and I'm the program uh, director at International Student and Scholar Services. And I'm going to talk to you about bias. I want to start by saying that ISSS is here for you. And uh, the University of Minnesota is committed to being an inclusive and welcoming campus. As I begin to talk about bias, which really are acts that are intentional or unintentional that are meant to hurt people based on someone's identity or group identity. So some examples are someone uses a racial slur when talking with you or near you. Someone tells you to go back where you came from. Someone refuses you entry to an establishment or a service due to your experience. Uh, appearance. We know that incidents of bias are on the rise and impacting our international community, especially Chinese and other Asian students and Asian Americans as well. These incidents are a result of racist and xenophobic responses to the coronavirus pandemic. The reports we have been getting at our office are reports of mainly people making hurtful comments off campus. However, we want to make sure that you are taking precautions and getting support. It is normal to feel confused and fearful about what happened. And that's why it's so critical that you talk to someone from our office or um, other um, or your department. You, you should feel confident that you have support from us. Specifically reach out. If you choose to report, please report to ISSS and or the Bias Response and Referral Network. Reporting to uh, the Bias Response and Referral Network will help Help us get a better picture of what you're experiencing on campus. Talk to friends and family. When people don't share, they tend to get more fearful and um, tend to feel like that they are blaming themselves for an incident that, that is clearly not their fault. Use, uh, we have a really good uh, sheet, uh, a tip sheet to help you to understand uh, what to do um, if you experience bias or other people um, have experienced bias and how to support them. You can find the tip sheet on our website. Again, you're not alone. During this time, make sure you're not being fearful and isolating yourself. We've heard of instances and um, where people have really uh, are fearful of going outside. So just reach out. Um, it's really critical and important that you reach out to us. Um, we know that uh, the state of Minnesota is taking bias incidents really seriously. Our governor has also established um, um, anti-Asian hate crime line um, that uh, we'll post on our FAQ as well. So instances that are happening off campus, if you wanna use that line, helpline as well, but we encourage you to come to us um, and use the resources um, at the University of Minnesota. Now I'm gonna hand it uh, over to Dave Golden, who is gonna talk to you about Boynton and what they are doing for, for our community. Thank you. Um, hello, thanks for joining us today. 
I just want to let you know about what's happening at Boynton right now, just to confirm that we still are open. We're still seeing patients for all kinds of different things. And we want you to just give us a call if you need any kind of care, you know, at all. And you can call the our nurse line, our general appointment line, our information line. They'll all get you to the right spot if you uh, if you call in. For for people that need to be seen right away and seen in person, yeah, we need to we can make arrangements for that to come into the the clinic. We're also doing a lot of care via telehealth uh, over Zoom, just like this. In fact, for mental health, we're um, Actually, we're busy. I mean, we have appointments available. This is a good time to schedule an appointment. Um, but they are um, seeing patients regularly uh, via uh, telehealth, just like just like this, and it's working out really well. Um, so, yes, it's open. The, your fees, your student service fees, are all fine. They all are working. The fee is in place. Um, if you have student insurance too, that's all good. Um, so that means that if you're insured this semester, now that insurance is good all the way until August. And the same thing for your student service fees. They're good for the months going forward. So you should be reassured about, um, about that. We also have some other services going on that you might be interested in. The, the food pantry is open and we're, uh, we've got food available Monday through Friday. And you can just order online too, and then have a time that you come pick it up right over at Kaufman. And for those that can't leave their house, like they're sick or they, they have no way to get here without going on like say public transportation and you don't wanna do that, we'll deliver it to you as, as well. And you can go right into the Nutritious You website and fill out what you want and come by and pick it up or they'll have somebody deliver it to you as, uh, as well. Um, yesterday, we tried uh, virtual pause. So the animals were in a big Zoom meeting. It was really kind of cool. We're figuring out the kinks. There was, it was a little bit awkward, um, but you come to a, a room and then you can look at what dogs or cats or horses <laughs> are available and then ask to be placed in that room essentially. And you can, uh, you can see, the, uh, see the animal. So, um, I did it yesterday. I thought it was it was pretty neat once we got through the initial sort of technology challenges uh, with it. So that'll be available again next Wednesday and um, that'll be up on our website as as well in terms of what time that's uh, um, available. We're, we're shooting for three o'clock next Wednesday. So, um, but it's live. I mean, the animals are actually there and uh, it's pretty fun. Um, for people that just are thinking they'd like to just check in about their stress level, we also have our stress check-ins via de-stress with our students. Those are all um, available. And the same thing, the nutritionists are available too for um, nutrition check-ins, or they're also seeing patients via telehealth, as is physical therapy. Eye clinic is answering questions. Um, we had questions about dental and all dental clinics across the state have been asked to only do emergency services, but if you're in pain, if you're having problems, feel free to call the dental clinic and dentists are on all day. They're, they're there all day to answer questions for you if you have them. And so sometimes there's some things that you can do on your own that will, that will help out. Um, so essentially all services are open to some level um, it's just we're trying to restrict the number of people that are coming in the building so everybody stays safe. We get a lot of questions about COVID testing, um, like I want to be tested. Um, and there the health department is kind of making the rules for us there. And we are only testing now um, people that are healthcare workers that are, um, that are sick, that are, that are not, uh, that, that have symptoms for COVID. But also we're um, uh, testing people with any other like serious health problems like asthma or diabetes or um, other uh, uh, conditions that might make COVID worse. We're also testing those folks too. So if you wanna be tested and you think you might qualify to, to come in, just give us a call um, and they can uh, help you out. And uh, the best number to call for that is 
612-625-7900, our nurse line, and that's also right on our website under the COVID information too. So you should be able to get that uh, easily. But um, uh, we've been, uh, we've got uh, quite a few patients every day that we're, that we're still seeing. And so we're, we're happy to help out when we can. And also the student insurance office is open if you have questions there too. They're answering their phones and emails just like, uh, just like any other day. Okay, so um, that's what I know and I'll hang on for questions. I just, I, I do have to step away at three o'clock. So we'll, I'll, I'll stay for as many as I can, okay? So thanks. And that's a great transition, Dave, because actually the Office of Student Health Benefits, Glenn, Glenn will be um, uh, sharing a few words as well. So go ahead, Glenn. Uh, thanks. Um, Hi, yeah, Glenn. thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Glenn Bates. I'm the International Scholar Processor at the Office of Student Health Benefits. Um, we are so open and doing our work, um, mostly from home. Um, so if you have questions or need help with something, you can email us um, or call us and leave a voicemail and we'll get back to you, either via email or phone, whatever is your preference. Um, just wanted to touch on a couple of things today, mostly an update for coverage with the Student Health Benefit Plan. Um, testing is being covered at no cost to dependents and covered members. Um, if they have, they think they've been exposed or if they need that assistance. Um, if treatment is necessary, that'll also be covered as long as it's meeting the guidelines by the CDC um, as far as your provider sending that in. So if you think that you have that kind of um, exposure, talk to your doctor and they can help you get started with that. As long as everything goes through, you shouldn't have issues with the cost portion, um, which is a nice upgrade for that. Um, we did also update the pharmacy benefits. So Twin Cities campus students, um, you now have access to the Prime Therapeutics Network. Um, so before Boynton Pharmacy was your primary location to go to pick up medications, um, we have opened that up since not everybody is on campus now. Um, so if it's not the most convenient, you can take your new insurance card, which should be mailed out to you. If not, please let us know. Um, you can take that to another pharmacy and network and pick up your medications, the same as you would at Boynton. Um, your copay would still apply, um, but you have that access now too. Uh, and then another big thing that's kind of come up for us is cancellations. Um, a lot of people are going home due to the COVID-19 situation, which is understandable. Um, so if you're going home, please let us know so we can help cancel your benefits um, if you need to do that. Um, typically, um, if the virus ends up subsiding earlier than we might anticipate you're welcome to come back if that's part of your plan um, and we can help you get started with the insurance coverage again once you return that won't be an issue for um, you to continue on that front um, those were the biggest things that we want to touch on today um, obviously questions that you may have please let us know um, our email address is um, oh what is our email address <laughs> uh, it's umshbo at umn.edu um, that's also on our website, which is shb.umn.edu, um, where you can also find our phone number. I just want to chime in too, and as the panelists are, are talking, if you want to go ahead and chat some of that main contact information into the chat, that would be great as well. So thank you very much, Glenn. You yeah, and we'll pass it over to Linda now. Okay. Let's see, share screen. I'm just trying to share, share my screen here. Oh, there, let's see, share screen. Okay, I, I can just not use the, the, the PowerPoint. It's not coming through. I'm not able to share my screen for some reason. I'm disabled, so. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to get my slides up. <laughs> okay, so I'm Linda Blake. I'm the, an analyst vendor manager in um, total compensation department here at the university. And um, we have had some questions come into our office um, and thought that they might be helpful to, to you. I, I, um, want to for sure um, make sure you get my contact information. Um, best way to reach me is Blake, 
B-L-A-K-E at U-M-N dot E-D-U. So if you're encountering any kinds of um, problems um, with your insurance, please, please reach out to me and either I can help you or I can find somebody else who can help you. Here are some, some of the questions that, that we've been receiving. Um, does my medical plan cover the treatment of COVID-19? Um, yes, it does. Member cost sharing for in-network COVID-19 hospital care will be waived. Now that's important um, that it's in-network and it's only hospital care. So, so this includes the copay, coinsurance, and deductibles, and it's effective March 1st to May 31st. So if you find yourself in a position where you, where you need to be treated um, in the hospital, just, just get the care you need. Um, just want to make a note, though, that this does not cover clinic needs. This is just in-network hospital care. Um, another question is, does our health benefits coverage with Medica cover COVID testing? Um, well, Dave talked a little bit about that. Um, um, yes, it does. It covers co-pays, co-insurance, and deductibles related to COVID-19 diagnostic lab testing, and that will be waived. So employees should contact Medica for specific coverage questions about that. Pharmacy, um, if you're on our pharmacy plan, um, can chronic medications be filled for 90 days? Um, yes, chronic medications can currently be filled for 90 days if it's written that way by, by your provider. Um, chronic medications are maintenance medications for significant health conditions such as cardiac conditions or diabetes. Now an important point is um, there are chronic prescriptions for specialty medications and those can only be written for 30 days because um, many specialty medications are started as split fill medications um, to make sure that um, the member can tolerate the medication before the member needs to, to pay the full 30-day copay. So, so um, chronic medications at, at 90, but um, if it's a specialty medication, that has to be written for 30. And are, are we covering the cost of medications that have proven to be successful in helping with the symptoms associated with COVID-19? Any pharmacy copays that are related to the treatment of COVID-19 symptoms will be covered by the U plan, and there will be no expense for members. Um, so the symptoms are things like fever, cough, shortness of breath. So your provider can give you a prescription for these types of medications to help relieve the symptoms, cough syrups, cough medications, decongestants, inhalers, antibiotics, those kinds of things for the symptoms of COVID. And then we will continue to work with Prime Therapeutics, who is our, our pharmacy vendor, to identify the drugs that can be covered based on their efficacy in reducing the symptoms of, of COVID. So go ahead and um, get the medications that, that you need through your, through your um, physician as a prescription. Um, an another um, question you might have, you've, you're um, listening to the news. Um, are we covering the cost of medications that have pre proven to be successful in the treatment of employees with COVID-19. So, so any pharmacy co-pays that are related to COVID-19 treatment will be covered by the U-Plan. Um, there'll be no expense for members. Um, the two medications that you're hearing a lot about are um, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. Um, so those are the two that um, you're hearing about and we will we'll cover those. Um, they, Chloroquine has been approved by the FDA for the treatment of, of malaria and is now being used for COVID-19 on an off-label basis. So chloroquine would need to be used under the regular care of a physician and is generally used for treatment in the hospital. Um, and we will continue to work with Prime Therapeutics um, to identify drugs that can be covered based on um, treating COVID if there's other drugs that become available. So if there's a shortage of generic drugs, will employees be able to get the non-generic equivalent for the generic price? Um, yes, if that happens, we will work with Prime Therapeutics to assure that there is another generic or brand medication available to our members at, at um, no increase. And will our health plan cover the cost of the COVID-19 vaccine once it's developed? So yes, when a vaccine becomes available and we're thinking that might be 12 to 18 months, um, that would be an approved coverage and would be provided on either our pharmacy or medical plan, but at no cost to the member. And I'd also like to talk to you about some virtual care resources that are available during COVID-19. Um, there's a nice um, um, website and I will 
I, I will put that into the, the chat once, once I'm done, but, but there's a website and it talks about um, physical health, um, the, the resources available for that. Um, virtual care, Amwell, is available 24-7, and um, that is for all of our Medica plans. Um, no discrimination against the plans, it's available on, on all of them. Um, and then on care is a virtual care option for, for Twin Cities-based members of um, the Vantage Plus ECO, so like your Fairview employees, and, um, <clears throat> and Fairview coverage. Um, Virtuel is a virtual care option for residents of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and um, select other states. And it's ne in network for Medica plans, except for the Eltru and Vantage Plus ACO plans. So those are all nice virtual care um, resources for you. You don't have to visit a physician. You can just make a phone call or have a, have a virtual visit. Um, for, for mental health, we have some resources too for employees. We have Amwell once again, and that um, is um, covered by all of our Medica plans. It um, includes psychiatry and therapy. And um, there is a primary care cost. So whatever you would pay, if you went into your physician for a primary care cost, that's what it would cost to use the Amwell. Um, employee Assistance Program by Sand Creek, I really recommend. Um, I actually manage this program. And um, we offer up to eight sessions free for employees. So, so please take advantage of that if you, if you need to do so. Um, and that's available too to your family members. Um, and we've also, um, during this time period, um, have expanded EAP services to cover non-benefit eligible employees and their family members as well. So if you know someone who's not eligible for the U plan, but is in need of um, some EAP services or an employee, um, please um, direct them to, to the EAP. They're, wel they're welcome there. And then um, one other thing I'd like to talk about is financial health. Um, we have, um, a program called LSS Financial Counseling. It's uh, available to our employees and it's also available to students. So, so um, please um, access that. Um, the website that I'm gonna give you is gonna provide you links to all of these resources. And then the well-being program. Um, many of you might be familiar with that if you're eligible for benefits, um, you might be participating in that already. That's, that's it. So please, please send me some questions if you have some. Great. Thank you, Linda. And um, our last presenter um, is going to be Elisa Eland. And after that, we'll, we'll start um, answering some of the questions that you have posted through the chat feature and through the anon anonymous Q&A. Hello, my name is Alisa Eland. I'm the head of counseling and advising at ISSS. And I want to talk to you about, just briefly, about three topics related to mental health and getting support. So I'll tell you about some of the issues that we're hearing from scholars about that are impacting them, um, ideas for coping, and then also some resources for getting support. So first of all, um, so some of the issues that um, scholars are telling us about include um, stress from the uncertainty that they are experiencing, disappointment about not being able to, not everybody's able to complete what they, uh, why they came to the University of Minnesota, um, concerns about family and friends, both here and in their home countries, um, loneliness and isolation um, because many fam family and friends have gone home, um, or, or left for other parts of the United States, and um, some of you may be living alone, and also um, a feeling of powerlessness uh, due to the change in your circumstances with this uh, crazy situation that we're all in. I, I think that all of us are impacted in a personal way by all of the things that are going on. And next I wanna just um, give you a couple of ideas about coping strategy. Uh, coping strategies, I think most importantly is for you to think of something that would be helpful to you. And you can think about times in the past when you've had to cope with very difficult situations and think about what kinds of things helped you in the past. But here are some ideas that you could consider. It's certainly important to stay connected with your um, family and friends. So. Um, if possible, keep doing that regularly. Keep a regular routine, like with your sleeping and eating and exercise. 
take breaks from the news and the social media. It is really important to give your brain and your heart a break from, from the bigger picture that's going on. And then think about things that help you relax, like maybe music, um, dancing, books, that sort of thing. And then my last topic is where you can get support. So uh, as it's already been said, ISSS is here to support you and you can make an appointment to see an ISSS counselor. It'll be virtual, of course, but if you go to our website um, and look at the services um, on, the, on the first page, there'll be a link. You can find out how to make a virtual appointment with a counselor. And then lastly, you've already heard about uh, resources available through um, the two uh, health insurance plans. And I'll just um, say that it's really important that you check and see what's available to you. Check with your insurance provider um, because uh, different people have different benefits. So uh, within, you know, because they have different providers. So just check with your provider to see what's available to you. But for, um, as Linda mentioned, the employee assistance program is available to, to uh, employees who are uh, eligible for university benefits and um, your insurance provider can tell you what mental health resources you have and then the university does have a 24-hour crisis line that you can either call or text and that's available to any faculty staff and students so i'll put those numbers in the um, in the chat as well as my email if you have questions about what i talked about or other things related to mental health and i can help you get connected to the to the right resources. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I know that was a lot of information um, that we shared, but we are going to post this uh, webinar, this, this virtual forum on our website, and it will also have subtitles. So there, if there is something that, that you wanted to hear or, or maybe didn't quite understand, we are going to post it. I think it'll be as soon as tomorrow, it will be posted on our website. So now we're going to start with our um, taking some of the questions that you um, had asked and uh, doing an answer session. And so I'll go ahead and hand it over to, I think, Stacy to um, start with the first question. So Stacy, you and I can just kind of go back and forth. Or Julie, someone. Sure. Yep. So the first question is about insurance. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw it. Okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't going in order. I was just, okay. So the, um, so Dave, I, I'm, so Stacy, I'm just, you know, I'm not going in order. I'm just doing oh. big, the ideas. So, but I can go ahead and ask the insurance question. Um, and I'm not sure if this is Dave or if it would be Glenn, but um, someone had said that they were planning, um, they have a question about the health insurance, that um, they're wondering about making payments with health insurance, if there are problems with the payments to health insurance and not being able to go and visit Boynton uh, to get clarification about the health insurance, what should they do if they're having problems around payment with health insurance? Um, if you're currently paying with a card, um, like a credit, or credit card or debit card, uh, we do have payment forms that you can download from our website to submit to us to update information if that's necessary. Um, if you usually pay monthly, like coming into the office with a check or cash, uh, we are currently closed just to try and follow orders as best as possible. Um, so if, um, if you're able to send in maybe a check via the mail, we are still checking in the mail occasionally. Otherwise, it might be easier to try and switch to a card method. Um, and can they call you if they need help with that? Absolutely. You can definitely call and leave a voicemail. When we check the voicemail, which we do constantly, um, we'll give you a call back. Otherwise, you can email us with your, student, your university ID, um, and we can respond to you via email if you want something in writing, if that's easier to communicate with, whatever works, but we can definitely assist you with those. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Stacey, you want to go ahead and ask a question? Yep. So we have a very specific question from someone asking about going from non-resident alien status to resident alien status. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, except maybe you're asking about permanent residency. Um, I might 
I would recommend that you email us with your specific question about that. Um, kind of depends on what you're, what you're planning on doing and why you're applying for permanent residency. Um, is it based on marriage or employment? I mean, there's, there's all sorts of ways. And so depending on um, what your situation is might depend on what the answer is. So I recommend you email that question to us and, and you can maybe give some more specifics and we'll get back to you about that. Um, I also noticed uh, that there are a bunch of questions again about extensions. Um, how about Julie, do you wanna just give a, just a brief overview of, of our extension process for everyone? Sure. Um, so we do ask that if you need to extend that you email those applications into us. Um, it's been on there, but I'll say it again. It's I-S-S-S-J-A-S-T at U-M-N dot E-D-U. Basically, it's going to be the same process just through email. So any of the supporting documents that we want in a face-to-face -face interaction, we want through email. So um, if you're covered by the U plan, we're looking for a copy of your insurance card along with that application. Um, if you're covered by the student health benefit plan, know that we are going to contact the lovely people, Glenn, um, that you see um, to verify that you are insured before we're going to go ahead and process your extension. You are going to need to reach out to your department, which may be a little bit of a different experience for you than normal because they're remote just like we are, um, but we're going to need the completed fee form filled out by your department for you. Um, if you are being paid by the university, we're looking for the offer letter from your department as well. The first page of the application tells you the supporting documents we need. So I would encourage you look at that application. If it says that we need something, go ahead and send it to us along with your materials. Um, we are getting a lot. I know everyone is very concerned right now. I hear that and, and I feel you, but please know that if your extension request from like August forward, as much as you want that document right now, it's not really urgent to me. Um, you'll get it. I promise you will within that, that one to two weeks that it takes us to, to get these out. But in the meantime, like I'm looking for people who um, their flights have been canceled. They, they really need that document as a safety net. Um, so, so please know that we're going to help all of you, but um, maybe consider your, your colleagues and your friends and, and their situations as well, um, as much as I know that you want that document. Um, I think what's a change for people is that uh, the normal process is we have that document ready and you come and pick it up. Obviously, there's not a place for you to do that right now. So when your application is complete, I will be contacting you to verify the address that we have on file is the best address to send your form. Uh, and if it's not, I'll have you give me the right one to make sure it, it goes out to you and that you receive it. Um, anything, Stacy, that you feel people should know about extensions that I'm not hitting? Nope, um, I did post our website where you can access the extension application in the chat. So be sure to look at that. Um, we did get one question from someone about, hey, I know I can get an extension, but what about my visa? So I assume you're talking about the visa stamp in your passport. That visa stamp is only needed for entry into the United States. If you are already here, you plan to stay here, you're going to continue to stay here and work on your J program do not worry about your visa stamp expiring. That is okay. You will still be in status and nothing's gonna happen. Now later, when hopefully things start to get back to normal and we are able to travel and see our friends and family like we all wanna do and you go home and you also plan on coming back again, then yes, you'll need to go to the consulate, your home country consulate, and apply for a new visa so that you can return. But until that time, do not worry about your visa expiring. I'm seeing a lot of questions about the EAD card renewals as well. Um, 
there's no expedited process to that with this situation, unfortunately. Uh, they are still processing the applications though. So if you know that your EAD is going to expire and you want to submit um, a new request for a valid EAD, go ahead and do that. But um, they have not done any sort of um, due to the, the COVID situation. Um, Beth, I'm not sure if you saw this question about someone who, um, I think it's a, a Glenn question, possibly. But this person, um, their program is ending in July. They have a 30-day grace period in which they can stay in the United States. Um, they're in J status, actually. Um, you're not a tourist. They're actually still in J status. But how do they continue to have health insurance until they actually physically leave the United States? So at this time, with that 30 day grace period, we would be able to extend the coverage. What we've been asking is that um, scholars submit up their flight plans if they have them, even if it might be canceled, so we can set an end date for it if they're going home. Um, we do still, um, we are still asking for payment for the insurance, um, as you are able to do, we know what that payment form, but keeping the insurance active, we want to make sure that you're covered, especially during this time while you are here. Um, so as long as we have something to help you get that canceled, then there shouldn't be any issue for you. I don't know if that answers the question, but yes, you can have insurance and we will help you have that. I did see a couple of other questions related to insurance um, issues with payments or notifications that um, billing didn't go through right. If any of you have questions about your insurance payments, whether they're working or not, um, definitely reach out to Glenn and his colleagues um, and they'll help you. They're great. Uh, there was a question, I, I don't know, um, there was a question earlier on about, again, if their costs, if, if someone were to um, uh, um, get the COVID virus, again, they're asking, will they be covered and to what extent? So I know you've said it before, but I think because it's such a, a, um, a worry for, for people around expenses related to COVID, if you could um, just mention one more time about um, the expenses. So um, expense wise, um, we are still asking that scholars pay their premiums as normal. Um, if you are not able to pay or if you're having an issue with that, maybe you received an email that the card you have provided was not able to run through, um, please respond to us um, and let us know what the situation is and we'll try to work with you. Um, it's everything is evolving and it's a very um, alive process. Um, so as things change, we're trying to stay nimble and um, helpful to all of you because um, you do want you to have health insurance. It's necessary in case anything of any sort happens. Um, so at this time, we are still asking for payment. But if you have an issue with that, please let us know so we can try and work with you for a better solution. And I think that that you the costs if you have to get a COVID test that that cost would be covered and all COVID related costs at this sure. time are being covered. Right. So if you've been exposed to COVID and you go in to see a doctor, or if you think you have symptoms, and your provider orders a test, um, that should be covered at no cost to you. Um, if it's not necessarily the standard COVID test, but it is coded as such, when your doctor submits that bill, um, those claims to the insurance, and it's within that COVID um, area, that will be covered at no cost to you as well. Um, so that should be helpful, and in, in at least, especially for the COVID part, um, we're trying to alleviate those costs because this is a big deal. And under under the U plan, it's just um, I mean clinical costs. If you go in, um, you're going to have the clinical copay, but but it's just the testing that that will be covered, and then also just um, the in network you know hospital care that will be covered. You know outpatient isn't covered. 
Great. Um, so we have about five minutes left. And Stacey, did we were we able to address most of the questions? I think most of them. Let me. There is one question. Maybe real quick, we could answer. Sure. It's sure. Go like ahead. It's, I'm thinking it's from a student. Okay. Uh, do you anticipate extensions being available for students whose term ends in the summer? Julie, you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, so if your student program is done, you don't have the ability to extend as a student and continue those courses. However, there is an option for academic training, um, which would be a work opportunity that's tied to your degree program. So if you're able to find that opportunity, we could extend your program to enable the academic training to, to push it out that way. Um, otherwise, you may need to be looking into a, a change of status um, to keep you here. And I would say, give us a, an email, give us a call so that we can walk with you through your personal situation and kind of figure out the best path for you. Thank you, Julie. And thank you to all the panelists and, and thank you to everyone who attended today. I'm going to, we're going to turn it back over to our director, Barbara Kapler, and she'll be, uh, provide us a closing for, for today's forum. I think that's actually coming to me. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, then I have a question that I have to have Barbara answer. I did. Okay email or text her to see if she could answer it. Barbara, there is a, there's a, um, a question um, that someone has addressed around, uh, basically around the climate, um, around regarding discrimination in the news and the TV and the internet and um, what are, trying to understand the true thoughts of the local uh, residents. Um, could you kind of share a little bit of your thoughts around um, the, the, the questions? Yeah, happy to. And um, I appreciate the question and we share the concern about um, how the United States has responded in a larger political level. Um, we wish that there had been more recognition and attention um, earlier on about the racism and bias. I can speak um, for my own perspective and would encourage staff to add that um, while I believe the pervasive attitude in Minnesota is one of care and concern for community members, appreciation for the University of Minnesota as a whole, as well as the individual research and um, teaching contributions that everyone is making, including the international scholars. I think that the number of incidents are of concern my hope is that they are still a reflection of a small number of individuals, but that doesn't change when the um, experience has occurred, the significance of the impact. So I would never want to um, diminish uh, or invalidate those experiences, um, as I think that, as we're hearing from individuals, they seem to be um, in a surprise moment in a community, maybe off campus. Um, so I'm very much acknowledging that they are occurring, um, our regret about that. I don't think it's reflective of um, an overall atmosphere, even a majority, um, anywhere close to a majority of sentiment that um, is there for individuals in our community, including all of you. Um, I would invite if staff have other um, thoughts to add. I know we're really close uh, to the end of our time. This is really an important question. I can, uh, I can just add um, that the important part or when bias or racism happens is to talk to someone, um, get the support that you need, um, whether it's from our office or friends or family, it's important to address it so you feel that there is a sense of, um, you know, you're not doing this, you're not dealing with this alone. Um, in terms of kind of staying at home, I think I would um, really use some instruction from uh, ISSS that we put together 
it's really thinking about how do you protect yourself when you go out, try and connect with friends so you're not going out alone. Um, those are the things that we would advise anybody uh, taking uh, safety precautions. Um, so uh, please reach out if you have um, if you have more questions, I put my email as well in the chat uh, for you to connect with me. Okay. With that, um, if uh, there are, you uh, asked questions and we were not, sorry, one second. Okay, sorry, let me start over. If you had questions and we were not able to get to them, uh, we will be going through the questions and make sure that we answer all of them um, and that we will get those uh, out to folks. Um, so again, I wanna thank all our presenters. Uh, Dave Golden had to go off the call, but I do wanna thank Dave for attending to talk about Boynton. Um, I wanna thank Barbara and Elisa and Julie helping out, and Kabir, and Thorin helping with the tech from ISSS. I also want to thank Linda for coming and talking about insurance, Glenn uh, also talking about student health benefits insurance. Um, and so thank you very much for taking your time. And, and also, I don't know if I, I thank Beth, thanks Beth too, for helping organize this forum and with helping with the chat and Q&A and everything. Um, please be sure to pay attention to our weekly updates for future communications. Uh, when, ne when need be, we are sending individual emails, uh, but usually most of our communication is coming through the weekly update, which is sent every Monday. Um, we also have some frequently asked questions on our main webpage. And we are trying to add more uh, questions that are directly related to scholars onto that frequently asked question document. And we will continue to add more and more questions and, and the answers onto that document. As it's been mentioned earlier, this forum has been recorded. We will post it on our website. So if you feel you might have missed something, please go and take a look at it again. Um, I also want to thank all of our J advisors. We are all working really hard to answer your questions and your concerns via email and phone. Um, and we're trying to do it as quickly as possible, but we are getting a lot of them, lots of questions. So please be, be patient with us as we try to get through those, those emails and calls. And we're also very busy processing your extension requests and travel signature requests and all those things. And we are, we're trying to keep within our normal processing time. Um, so I just wanna thank all of you for attending. We really miss seeing you in our office, um, but we hope to see you again when, when things uh, get back to normal and we can all be safe uh, together. Um, so thank you very much.